we went over the setup, but today I'm gonna to show you how I ran the aerospace fitting in on the Tornos GT32. I made this part out of two different materials, one out of brass so that you can see the whole part being made without coolant, and then one out of stainless steel 316L where you're not going to be able to see anything because there's coolant on these Swiss machines. It's so oily, it gets everywhere, and I love it. Shout out to Blazer. This coolant's great. Let's start off with my first tool. We're going to face the part with a DCMT insert from Kenna Metal, KCU 10B grade. This is a 30 thou radius, and I'm gonna be using this tool multiple times through this part. I'm running it at 700 SFM with a feed rate of 9 thousandths per revolution. I actually sped up that feed rate a little bit from the brass parts because I saw how my chips were breaking on the steel. So we bumped it up to 9 thousandths per revolution, and I think I can bump up that number a little bit more to get an even better chip break. All we're gonna to do to start off this part is facing it, and then we're gonna run our drill. Now one thing that's different compared to running any other turning machine like a lathe versus a Swiss machine is that you actually have to think about your order of operations a little bit differently. Now on a lathe, normally what I like to do is I like to turn everything at once, get as much as, as I can do with that tool all in one go, and then we start looking at my other tools. But with a Swiss machine, you have to think about how this material is coming out of the guide bushing. Now let's say I turn all of this material all at once with the OD tool. Now when you do the drill, all this material is no longer being supported by the guide bushing because it's all loose. So you have to change your way of doing things. We face the part. Now we have our drill coming in while the material is all solid. For our drill, I'm running a 9.4 millimeter go drill from Kenna Metal. It's eight times D, so it's a little bit long, but this drill will let us go through our entire part so I don't need to worry about drilling it on the second side. I'm running it at 1000 RPM with a feed rate of 4000 per revolution and I also have a peck cycle just so I don't overload this drill. I could probably get away with going with it in one shot but I want to take it easy on it. So we're using a peck cycle, 4000 per revolution. After our drilling cycle, we go back to our OD tool. Now we're gonna do what I talked about. We're gonna turn just the threaded portion of the part. So using this DCMT insert, we're gonna turn the major OD of the threads and we're gonna turn it up to the thread relief. We're gonna leave a little bit of material for the groove tool, but I'm also gonna make sure to put a chamfer on the OD of the part because this material, when I run the threader, is gonna constantly be sliding in and out of the guide bushing. So I wanna make sure there's no burr. Now, one nice thing about solid cam is I can check a little box on solid cam and it's gonna automatically program that chamfer on the OD of the part. So even though I just program it in a little section, it's gonna automatically put that chamfer that I want on the OD. So really convenient. After we turn where the OD is on our threads, we're gonna put in our thread relief. I have a 62 thousandths wide top notch grooving insert from Canna Metal using a KCU 25 grade insert. We're just dropping in and then we're gonna put in our back chamfer right at the end where our threads are gonna be. It's a really quick tool and that's gonna bring us to our threads. I'm using a lay down style threading insert from Kenna Metal. We're gonna be doing it in multiple passes. So this bar is gonna be constantly feeding in and out of that draw tube. That's why I have that chamfer like I mentioned and I'm running 916 by 20 threads. A little bit of a fine pitch. I'm running it at 1000 RPM with a feed rate of 50 thousandths. After we have our threads in there, we can start turning the rest of our part. So like I said before, we're doing this in sections. We finished our threaded portion. Now we're gonna turn the rest of it. We're running the same OD tool, 30 thousandths nose radius, DCMT insert. I ended up liking the finish on this part so much that I just ended up roughing and finishing with the same insert. Same speed and feed as before, 700 SFM, feed rate of 9 thousandths per revolution, and we're just turning all the way across past where our hex is. After we have all of our OD turned, I'm gonna put a back chamfer past where our hex is. To do that, I'm gonna use a groove tool. 
A5 grooving insert from Kenna Metal. This is a 118 wide insert and it's actually the same insert we used to part off the part. I wanted a longer insert and I wanted to use the same tool that I was going to use to part it off just to make sure everything was dialed. I probably don't have to worry about things like that on this Tornos machine but I just figure you know the part off tool is going to be going there later why not use the same tool. This tool is running at 225 SFM with a fee rate of 4 thousandths per revolution. So all of our turning work is done on the first side. Now we can get into the live tools. The first tool coming up is a flat bottom drill from Kenna Metal, three times D long, 3.97 millimeter. And this is just to put the flats around the OD of the part for my next tool. I'm running this tool at 3,500 RPM with a feed rate of almost nine inches per minute. We got our starter flats for our tool. Now we can run the drill that's going to put in our wire holes. This is one of Kenna Metal's Ken Drill Micros, a two times D drill. It's a 1.8 millimeter drill, 70 thousandths diameter. Because of how long it is, I actually come in halfway on each side. I could have got a longer drill and I probably should have for next time, but I wanted to do this job with what tools we had in the shop before I start looking into getting more tools for these machines. I also have this drill running a PEC cycle because of how small it is and because of what it's doing on the stainless steel. I ran it in one shot on the brass, but I figured on stainless steel it probably need to light up a little bit because of how small it is. So just a small PEC. I don't think I lost too much time on it, but I did look at the parameters on the tool to keep it within there. I'm running it at 3,500 RPM. That's only about 65 SFM. It's not much, but I didn't want to go too much because of the RPM limit on that holder. But I did kick up the feed rate to 12 inches per minute. After that tool runs, we're going to put the hex around our part. So for this, I'm running a Harvey 1 TE in a dual lock holder. And this is one of the dual lock holders that I mentioned in the setup. I'm running a dual lock 12 in an ER collet. And the dual lock itself is a Harvey 1 TE from Kenna Metal. Now I'm just face milling all around the hex of the part. When I did the brass, I ended up doing it in one shot. And then when I did the steel, I kept all the parameters the same, but I wanted to add a finish pass to it. So it's actually doing this in two passes. I do the, most of the work with one pass, leaving five thousandths, and then I come down and do a finish pass. Just slow down the inches per minute, just slightly, but I'm pretty happy with how that came out. Now one other thing I wanted to show on this hex, and I did it for all the milling tools, is that I program it once, and then I use the transform toolpath function to duplicate this pass around the entire part. So the transformation that we do for this is a fourth axis transformation, and this allows me to rotate my operation around the part. So for the hex example, I've got six different angles starting at zero and going at 60 degree increments all around the part. So this lets me program it one time and using the transformation, we can rotate our pass and I don't have to reprogram it multiple times around the part. I'm running this tool at 315 SFM with 20 inches per minute and I slow that down slightly for the finish pass. That's everything on the first side. Now we're ready to part it off and do the chuck transfer. Now for the pickoff, I actually handled that all through SolidCam using your machine control operations. Now if you click MCO, you have all of these auxiliary programs you can run through SolidCam. So we have stuff like repositioning the chucks, doing pickoffs, eject cycles. So through this, we can do our pickoff cycle and you can see on our operations tree, I get it ready for the cutoff operation by positioning our cutoff tool in place with the Z1 positioning for cutoff. We have the Z4 pickoff operation that gets our sub spindle ready for the pickoff operation along with the Z axis synchronization to sync up the two spindles. And then we run our cutoff operation and then our spindles sync again and then our Z4 axis retracts to get us ready for our sub spindle work. Now we're going to start to work on our sub spindle. First tool, 
We got our DCMT insert, the face, the front of the part. We already did most of the work on OP1 by putting that back chamfer on there. So now we're just setting the size to the overall length of our part. Same speeds and feeds, it's not doing much, 700 SFM, but I slowed it down to a feed rate of 3 thousandths per revolution because this is technically a finish pass. Now after that, we're gonna run our two horn tools. The first tool up is our super mini carbide boring bar. I'm running this tool at 1800 RPM with a feed rate of 6 thousandths per revolution. I sped it up compared to the brass because I wanted a better chip and I was running it too slow and I could see that I could speed up this bar faster. I'm using this to rough and finish the ID, so one tool to do it all. And we're going in, doing all the inside work and putting that inside chamfer of the part. Finally, we have our last tool and that's to put the ID thread into our part. Once again, I'm using a horn tool. This is a super mini carbide threader, I'm running it at 1000 RPM with a feed rate of 50 thousandths. This is actually the same thread as the OD of the part. So we're running it at 50 thousandths per revolution, just like the first side, multiple passes, and we're gonna get a nice smooth thread on the inside of the part. After that, we have our eject cycle, and then we get our completed part. So now that we've ran our part and I've ran through the tools one at a time, I'm happy with my speeds and feeds. I'm happy with how everything is running. I can go to solid cam and go to our operation sequence manager. And here I can see all of our weight codes in the machine. Now, right now by default, it's set to how I programmed it. So everything is in order one by one. But when you're actually running these machines, you don't want to run these tools one at a time. You want OP2 to be running while OP1 is happening. So here, I've watched my tools run. I know how long they're running. I know where it's safe to add my weight codes and I'm familiar with my program. I can delete these weights over here. After my cutoff, I can say add my new workpiece. And here's my second operations. I can say after my big drill has ran and I'm doing most of my OD work on the part, maybe that's a good time to start my facing operation on the second side. So here we can add a synchronization point. And after we're done with our drill and our OD tool comes in, that's when we're gonna start running our second side. And then I can say, I'm pretty sure my eject cycle is gonna happen by then, but I just wanna add a wait code before the live tooling starts, just to make sure that that part's ejected. So all of our turning is gonna run together. We have a wait code, and then our milling operations are gonna happen while it waits for the pickoff operations. I really like how you can see the wait codes clearly here, so I know exactly where my operations are. And I like, even though I'm deleting weight codes and adding them, it's automatically renumbering my weight codes. So it's taking care of that. So I'm not gonna have any weight codes in different orders. So that's our aerospace fitting. I'm really happy with the way it ran. I ran parts like this all the time before on the lathe, but it was my first time running a Swiss part. The steel one looks beautiful. I could run a million of these parts all day on this machine. So thank you so much for watching. Like this video, subscribe to our channel. I got plenty more parts I'm gonna be making on all of these machines and you're not gonna wanna miss it. So stay tuned. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.